What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at lead code problem number 344 reverse string. Mark this easy, let's get into it. So there's a couple new things here. I have a new chair, new camera, new haircut, gotta get used to all of these things. And I also wanted to start a new series going through lead code algorithmic questions using Python, both for data scientists and analysts, machine learning engineers going into interviews and software engineers looking at starting out lead code probably going to focus on easy and mediums because data scientists usually don't get hard questions but we're going to solve these using python because data scientists analysts and so on should be used to data analysis with python which is good and python is in my opinion also the best language to tempt these whether you're a software engineer or anything else because you usually need the least amount of code to get to a working solution which makes it easy to explain and also faster to come up with a working solution. So that's why we're going to use Python. Let's get into the problem. So our task is to write a function that reverses a string. The input string is given as an array of characters called char. Do not allocate extra space for another array. You must do this by modifying the input array in place with O of one extra memory. So we're not allowed to create another array or create a copy of that array and it should be done in place with constant extra memory O of 1. You may assume all the characters consist of printable ASCII characters. Example would be hello H-E-L-L-O. Output should be the reverse O-L-L-E-H. I'm going to present three approaches transforming one into the other so it shouldn't take too long. Bear with me and let's get started. So since we're using Python, trying to be Pythonic and using the least amount of lines of code to get the job done and use predefined functions, we could just use s.reverse, which is going to reverse a string or in this case a list of characters, which makes it quite easy, right? So this is already going to be a working solution, but what really happens behind the scenes is that using constant extra memory, what's the time complexity of that solution? And is that really what the question wants us to do? So this one uses O of n in terms of runtime complexity and then constant space. So that would be an accepted solution. And we're gonna understand what's happening here by implementing our own reverse function and looking at what happens behind the scenes. So this is kind of a cheat code in an actual interview that would be quite smart, but they would probably ask you to just implement that reverse function. So this works because reverse is actually modifying the array in place. And if we were using something like that, so slicing syntax, that wouldn't work because it creates a new copy of that array. And when you're assigning it to the original array, you still use that copy and that creates extra space and it also doesn't modify the input array. So we're going to start out with our recursive solution defining a helper function and two pointers because we need them for switching left and right part. So we call them left and right and we also just want to do that until we meet in the middle. So we're going to introduce a condition of left being smaller than right. That means we're only going to go until they meet or onto the middle because in the middle we don't really have to swap anymore. And um, now we need to swap them. So left element should become the right element and right element should become the left element. So we're going to switch H with O for hello in the case. And uh, the, uh, yeah, in order to swap we would make left right and right left but we can't do that in two separate lines because it wouldn't happen at the same time. It needs to happen at the same time otherwise the first value would already be updated and we would have the same value in both. So that wouldn't work. That's why we need to do it at the same time by using the comma syntax here. So right should be left the same time and then in order to make that a recursive solution we need to 
call helper again from within helper. So recursive approach calls a function within itself until a certain condition is met or is no longer satisfied in our case. So we're going to call helper with our updated index values of left and right. And left should be increased by one. We're going to start out with zero and go towards the middle. So we want to increase our left pointer and we want to decrease our right pointer to also move towards the middle element. Yes. So now all that's left to do is start out calling our recursive function with our initial index values of zero and length of s minus one to get the last index. And running that code should give us a working solution. So for this solution, our time complexity is O of n, while our space complexity or memory is not constant because we create a recursive stack. Actually, I kind of tricked you into not implementing reverse as it is implemented because it is implemented iteratively and not recursively as we did here because by doing it recursively we're creating a recursive stack so whenever we call that function within our function we need to memorize what happened the last time we called that function and that creates a recursive stack and that costs memory in that case o of n because we're going to go through it a number of times depending on the size of the array so that is not constant we're not using constant extra memory of o of 1 so we need to change up our solution. So we're going to solve this issue by using an iterative approach which is usually less cool than a recursive approach but in this case it helps solve our memory problem. So instead of a recursive function we're just going to rewrite our statement to use a while loop and have that same condition of left and right. I'm going to not call that function again but initialize our pointers before we run our loop. So left should be zero and right should be length of s minus one again. Then we do the same swap we did before. We just package it in another way. And then we also want to do our update. So left should be left plus one and right should be right minus one. You can also do that at the same time. left plus one, right minus one. That should also give us a working solution. We don't build up a recursive stack, which means we don't use extra memory. We just have our left and right pointer, so just two pointers. One is initialized to zero, the other one to length of s minus one. It doesn't really matter here, but we just use these two always. No matter how long our array is, our uh, runtime complexity is still O of n because we're gonna go through that array. Actually, we're using uh, n divided by two in terms of runtime complexity, but that's gonna reduce to O of n because tending towards infinity, half of infinity is still gonna be infinity. But we were able to reduce our memory to constant memory, which is cool. And I think it's a quite cool problem because it shows you that an iterative approach can be better than a recursive one. So let's get to the section where I talk about whether that is actually gonna come up in an interview in my opinion. And if I were in a data scientist interview, I would just start out using reverse if I'm using Python, because it's good to show that I know that and that would probably be the easiest way to do that. Why should I reinvent the wheel and re-implement that function that already exists? They might ask me to do it anyways and I would probably come up with that iterative approach anyways because it's probably easier to wrap your head around than the recursive one because a lot of people struggle with recursion but I think to really score and set myself apart from other candidates considering it's an easy question I think it would be important to know about recursive stack and that costing memory and comparing these two in saying there would be a recursive way of doing that but I'm choosing that iterative approach because it doesn't require extra memory. Yeah, so that would be probably the best solution and that's why I wanted to talk you through these three approaches. 
Anyways, that's been it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna go through more lead code, easy and medium, maybe math related questions for data science interviews, but they should also be, of course, relevant to software engineers and similar. Anyways, see you all next time.